In the peaceful waters of Omaha, Nebraska's aquarium, an extraordinary event occurred. A hammerhead shark, without ever mating, gave birth. This unusual birth caught the attention of scientists everywhere. At first, there was a lot of confusion as people speculated whether the shark had mated before being placed in the aquarium, or possibly with a different shark species. But these ideas were dismissed when it became clear that the sharks were too young and showed no signs of mating. The mystery deepened until DNA tests showed something incredible. A baby shark was born through a process called parthenogenesis. This rare way of having babies doesn't need a male. It happens when an egg starts growing into a baby all on its own. In this case, it was triggered by a cell almost identical to the egg, and the baby shark only got genes from its mother, with no contribution from a father's genes. Parthenogenesis is indeed a fascinating process seen in nature. Sometimes it's called a virgin birth because it involves an egg turning into a new creature without needing sperm. This happens in different animals like insects, reptiles, and fish. A great example is the case where the birth of a baby shark without mating surprised many scientists. But sharks are not the sole participants in this unique process. Other creatures, such as the velvet worm Epipora patisimtherni, certain spiders, the Brahmini blind snake, and the Indo-Pacific gecko also undergo parthenogenesis. The New Mexico whiptail lizard is another cool example. It's an all-female species that reproduces only this way. There are two primary types of parthenogenesis. In some species, it's the exclusive method for having offspring, referred to as obligates parthenogenesis. Meanwhile, other species have the ability to alternate between having offspring with a partner and reproducing independently, depending on their environment. This second type, known as facultative parthenogenesis, is seen in some aphids. They reproduce without partners in summer, but go back to normal reproduction in other seasons. However, parthenogenesis isn't perfect. The offspring are almost exact copies of their moms, which means they don't have much genetic variety. This lack of diversity can make them more vulnerable to diseases and changes in their environment. While it's not common everywhere, this method of making babies is quite widespread among some bees, ants, wasps, and sharks like the black tip and hammerhead. In the reptile world, some snakes and lizards also use this unique way to have babies, each adding their own twist to nature's wide array of reproductive styles. Moving on to the ocean world, let's talk about sharks. These creatures have been around for ages and have some pretty wild stories to tell. For example, the Stethicanthus, which lived millions of years ago, had a dorsal fin that looked like an ironing board with spikes sparking speculation that it might have been a bottom feeder in the mysterious depths of the sea. Then there's the Edestus, known for its bizarre jaw that looks like pinking shears, offering glimpses into the diverse nature of ancient shark jaws revealed through fossils. Another captivating example is the Falcatus, a diminutive shark with a sword-like spine in the male's head, navigating the waters approximately 325 million years ago. The absence of this spine in females sparks curiosity, prompting speculation about its potential role, possibly in attracting mates or serving a unique function in their lives. The Eugenia Dontida, characterized by spiral tooth whorls, differed significantly from today's sharks, notably lacking some of the fins we usually associate with these marine predators. Perhaps one of the most mysterious ancient sharks is the Helicoprion. At first, people thought its fossils were from an ammonite because of the spiral teeth. However, further research revealed that they belong to sharks. Amazingly, the Helicoprion managed to survive the planet's biggest extinction event, outliving 95% of all animal species. Diving deeper into the world of hammerhead sharks, we find a group of species that, despite their somewhat daunting looks, are actually not much of a threat to us humans. In fact, since records began in 1580, there have only been about 17 cases where these sharks have attacked people without being provoked. This shows that they're not as scary as they might seem. Among these species, some show a pretty unique behavior. They like to swim in groups. This is something you don't often see in sharks. A good example of this is at Malpelo Island in Colombia, where these groups swim, or schooling, adding a whole new dimension to how we understand their social lives. 
Each member of this diverse shark family, ranging from the renowned great hammerhead to the lesser-known white fin, contributes uniquely to ocean life. They show us how diverse adaptations can be, from hunting skills to where they prefer to live. The unique head shape of these sharks, known as the cephalofoil, isn't just for show. It is key to their survival and hunting ability. The way their eyes are set wide apart on this hammer-like head gives them an amazing field of vision. They can see almost everything around them, which is super helpful for spotting both prey and predators. But there's more to it than just good eyesight. The shape of their head also improves their sense of smell. The nostrils being far apart helps them pick up scents better, which is essential for finding food in the big ocean. Plus, they have special sensory organs all over their head that help them navigate and detect things in the water. Another cool thing about hammerhead sharks is that they can sense electrical signals in the ocean thanks to tiny dots around their mouth called ampullae de Lorenzini. These pores are filled with a gel that turns electric currents into brain signals, so they can sense even the tiniest movements of other sea creatures, helping them hunt. This ability might even help them navigate long distances using the Earth's magnetic field, and perhaps it's a way that they communicate with other sharks. The hammerhead sharks, part of the Sphernidae family, show how amazing nature can be. They've been around since the early Miocene epoch, and their unique head shape is a result of evolution. From the winghead shark with its really big hammer to the bonnethead shark with its smaller one, their evolution is a story of adapting over time. Hammerhead sharks also stand out for their social behavior. Unlike many sharks that prefer to be alone, they often form groups, especially at certain times of the year. These gatherings, which can be really big, are believed to play a big role in their life cycle, including mating, hunting, and maybe even protecting themselves from bigger predators. And when it comes to having babies, hammerhead sharks have a unique way. They are ovoviviparous, which means the eggs hatch inside the mother and she subsequently gives birth to live pups. The number of pups varies a lot among different types of hammerhead sharks. Once born, these young sharks are independent, receiving no assistance from their parents, which is pretty common among sharks. The way hammerhead sharks have evolved, especially their distinctive head shape and great hunting skills, is a perfect example of how creatures adapt to survive in the ocean. Scientists and people who love marine life are really interested in these sharks, as they offer so many chances for learning and discovery. Lately, there's been a lot of progress in studying the genetics of hammerhead sharks. By looking at their DNA, scientists are learning a lot about their past, how their populations are doing now, and how different they are from each other. This information is super important for protecting these sharks, especially as they face problems like being overfished, losing their homes, and dealing with climate change. Understanding their genetics aids in formulating effective plans to ensure the continued existence of these fascinating sharks.